back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Greg Guntanis, author of the upcoming Lance Gedrin Mystery Series. I release a lot of writing-related content on this channel, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to continue on the how to write a series theme. This is going to be the last video, at least for now, on how to write a series. And today, for this final video, I'm going to talk about branding. So we've already talked about your world and subplots and secondary characters and your main character and so forth. But if you don't adequately brand your series, then it's going to be very difficult for readers to sort of get drawn in and to keep their interest. Because you have to keep in mind that in today's day and age, attention spans really are limited. It's really tough to grab somebody's attention and keep it there and really make somebody, you know, a true fan. So what we need to do as authors is basically cut out any confusion that readers have about our work and really brand ourselves clearly so that whenever we do get a reader that is a fan of, say, a mystery genre or a thriller genre or a fantasy genre or what have you, if we've adequately branded our series and ourselves as authors, then we stand a better chance of retaining them as a lifelong reader, hopefully. So what I'm going to do in this video is do an on-screen demo of different ways that authors brand themselves. So I'm going to use two examples in this video. I'm going to use a independently published author, Mark Dawson, and I'm going to use a traditionally published author, Brad Thor. Both of them are in the thriller genre, so I wanted to keep the genres the same for the purposes of this video and this analysis. And hopefully this video will give you some ideas about how to brand your series and your work, uh, whatever the genre happens to be. So let's start with Mark Dawson first. So I'm going to click over here to Mark Dawson's website. And for those of you that don't know anything about Mark Dawson, he initially started off as a traditionally published author. I don't recall how many books he had, but at some point he stopped traditionally publishing and he decided to venture into independent publishing. And he created this series called the John Milton series. It is a thriller series that features a, an assassin. And he's gone on now, many years later, to be a multimillionaire off of this series that he indie published. So I think this is really cool to kind of look at how he brands himself and then we can go from there. So right away here at Mark Dawson's website, take note in particular of the color scheme. I think that's something that we as authors often overlook and that's what color scheme for our website is going to draw readers in, but not only that, what color scheme is going to set the tone and set the stage for the genre we happen to be writing in. Because if we go to a website and it's, say, pink all over and flowery, then chances are we are going to get that impression that that writer is using sort of a, a lighter vibe, a lighter tone, and is probably writing similar works to that effect. Conversely, if we go to a site like this, and this is Mark Dawson's site, where we have a darker scheme, sort of a man in silhouette, we get this sense or this vibe right off of the bat that this is going to be like a mystery genre or a thriller genre or something grittier. And that's all by design. So Mark Dawson you know, has really honed his skills over the years, and this comes even with you know, his website. So right off the get-go, no matter what genre you're writing, pay particular attention to the color schemes here. Are you writing a mystery or a thriller? Maybe you want to go with darker tones or darker hues. Are you writing something a little bit more flowery? Maybe you open up the color palette. So that's sort of the color scheme here at the website. Now let's go into his books. And he has a whole bunch of series out now, but let's go to that original series that really 
put him on the map, the John Milton series. So when we click here, we see right away sort of this stock photograph here of this kind of brooding figure. The color scheme once again is dark and this sort of promotes sort of this gritty genre, this gritty hero, John Milton, right? So now if we go further down, we get his covers. And this is absolutely imperative if you're thinking of indie publishing, and that is your covers and how they are branded. So not only should we brand our website and really focus on the color scheme, but our covers really play a big role in retaining that reader, hopefully for the long haul. So let's look at Mark Dawson's covers. So right away here, we see a consistent font across all of these covers. So whenever a reader happens across a Mark Dawson book, whether it be on Amazon or wherever else he happens to be selling his books, they know this is a Mark Dawson book. They know that it is part of a series because as you can see here, there is a little circle on each of his books, which denotes the tagline. So I don't know if you can see it here, but it's a John Milton novel. So let's click on one of these covers to get a little bit of a zoomed in view. So this one is actually a novella, but let's go back to another book. So here we have the consistent font for his author name. We have the tagline of a John Milton novel, so readers know immediately that it is a John Milton novel and it's not a fantasy novel or it's not a prequel or it's not a, um, a different character series, so readers right away know that. And then even for, the even for the title, the font is the same across all of his covers. Now, as you can see, there are differences, of course, across the covers. The backgrounds are obviously different. The font colors might be a little bit different for his name or for the title, though the fonts remain the same. And then, of course, we have Milton in silhouette on all of these different covers, but in a different pose or a different composition. So whenever you're thinking about your series, really visualize in your head, how are these covers going to look? How is the author name going to appear? Do you want the author name up top? Do you want it at the bottom? Where do you want your tagline? Do you want it in a circle? Do you want it spelled out horizontally? Where is your cover going to, to be? Do you want it, I'm sorry, where is your title going to be? Do you want it in the middle? Do you want it on the top? Now there's obviously no right or wrong way to do this because obviously writers have put their author name at the bottom, at the top, in the middle, doesn't matter. But as long as you stay consistent, you stand a better chance of building a consistent readership and avoiding any confusion that's out there. Because the last thing we want to do as writers is confuse the reader who is the potential buyer. Now, it is great to think about the craft of writing and to try to improve our craft. And hopefully every writer out there who is following this channel is doing that. Hopefully every writer is trying to improve every day. But the bottom line is once that book is done, once it's ready to go out there into the world, we need to switch from our writer hat to our business hat. And our business hat really needs to shine here because we need to get our work out there and we need to make sales ultimately at the end of the day. Now, if you're a writer who is just doing it for fun, just wants to see their book out there in the world and you don't care about sales, then that's great. You don't really have to focus on any of these things. But I think the vast majority of us not only want our work out there, but want our work to sell. So if that's the case and you want your work to sell, if you want to make money from this, money from the craft of writing, then you really have to pay attention to how other authors in your genre are doing it. So if you're a mystery author or a thriller author, maybe you kind of take note of Mark Dawson and how he's doing things. Now, if you're a fantasy author or you're a horror author, 
Maybe you go over to Stephen King's website, you analyze his covers, you see how things are being done there. If you're a fantasy author, maybe you're going to go over to J.K. Rowling's site or George R.R. R. Martin's site. You get the idea. You want to analyze how authors in your genre really do their branding. And it starts with their website, goes to the cover, and not only from the cover, then it trickles down to the social media. So let's look at Mark Dawson's social media here. Let's click on his Facebook link. I'm sorry, that's the Twitter link. So we clicked on his Twitter link, and as you can see, once again, the branding remains consistent. We have Milton and Silhouette. This is taken off of one of the covers, the Killer City cover that we just looked at. Let's go to his Facebook page. Same thing. The branding remains the same with his Milton character in Silhouette. And this ultimately communicates to a potential reader that this is a series, but also, and this is something that's often overlooked, this communicates to the reader that this is a professional. Because if we have sort of a, a mashup of pictures and um, you know slogans or things that really are cut and pasted and look amateurish, then many readers are not going to take a chance on us as writers. There is unfortunately a stigma out there that those that indie publish aren't as good as those that traditionally publish. Now obviously that is false because many indie authors like Mark Dawson here have gone on to have tremendous success, but it only takes a few indie authors to sort of throw books out there that aren't branded properly, that have a lot of spelling errors, that have poor covers, poor editing. And a lot of times that's all it takes for the rest of the indie community to get a bad rap. So make sure that you really hone in on some of these details for your author brand and really take it seriously before you hit publish on your first story in your series or your first novel in your series. So that's how Mark Dawson does it. Now, let's see how a traditionally published author does it. Are there any differences? So Brad Thor, for those of you who don't know, he is a really acclaimed thriller author. One of his main series is the Scott Harvath series, and it's sort of an ex, I believe it's CIA operative, who is stopping a bunch of terrorism and things like that. And he's gone on to sell a lot of books, he started um, many years ago, and he is one of the big names in the thriller genre. So I decided to use him as an example as well. So we're here at Brad Thor's website. And you can see, obviously, there are some more moving parts here. The website is, um, you know, really custom made. Same thing with Mark Dawson. This one kind of has a little bit more video on it, some um, you know, testimonials or maybe, um, you know, some author videos promoting the book. But let's go to the covers to kind of compare. So if we click on books, here we can see right away that the composition of the covers is very similar and it clearly denotes to a prospective reader out there that this is a Brad Thor novel. This is a Brad Thor thriller. Look at the text on these covers. So starting with the author name, it is the same size text, the same font all the way across. If we go down to all of these covers, same exact font. The only difference is the color scheme. Now the title, the same thing. We have a different um, font for the title, potentially, though it does seem in some of these cases as though the font is similar to the author font, or the author name font, but in any event, we see that the sizing is very similar. There's background pictures of planes or of, you know, weapons sort of setting the stage for the genre denoting to a potential reader that this is a thriller, this is potentially a political thriller, or a military thriller. 
And the tagline here for all of his books is a thriller. So if there's any confusion there, it's right there on the cover that it's a thriller. Now, if we go to the color scheme here, as you can see, it's a little bit of a lighter scheme than the Mark Dawson, uh, John Milton series. It's not as dark, though up here on the header section, there are some dark spots. But, you know, that's sometimes down to personal preference, but also... If we click on a book, for example, then we get a little bit more of the darker scheme. We have book trailers and things like that, but still, at least with Brad Thor, it is a lighter scheme, maybe, maybe to, to read a little bit easier on the eyes, but no matter what, that scheme stays consistent book to book to book across the site. So if we click on this, same thing, a lighter scheme with some darker text, and so on and so forth. Now if we go to his social media handles, let's go to his Facebook page. Here we have a little bit of a different setup for the Facebook cover. We don't have an actual character. We have the book trailer and sometimes with some of these more acclaimed traditionally published authors there's a little bit more of a budget that is attached to their work. So this you know could be their publishing house that is putting out this trailer on the cover just to kind of have more eyeballs on it. But clearly it is branded with the cover photo here. It's sort of the blue and the blue here. It is a uh, a similar scheme if we go back and click on his Twitter feed. Same thing, the blue and the blue. Point being, we want to really stay consistent because readers like consistency. They don't like to sort of scratch their heads and think, where are we going with this? Because what we don't want is for a reader to click on our book and get taken to the Amazon page, for example, and then to immediately click off because they thought that they were going to potentially be buying a mystery or a thriller, and then it turns out to be a fantasy novel or it turns out to be something different. So, you know, I implore all of you authors out there, whether indie or even traditionally published authors, I implore everybody to really think about branding and think about what people should know about you. So whenever someone says your name and you have the, you know, the good fortune of building up a name in the author community, whether indie publishing or traditional publishing, what do you want people to have your name synonymous with? Do you want people to say, oh, that's the mystery writer that has the John Milton series, has sold millions of books, I love his work? Or do you want readers to kind of say, you know, he kind of writes all over the place, mystery, thriller, fantasy, historical fiction. I don't really know exactly what to make about him. He had a, a decent book in the mystery genre. I didn't like his history, historical novel. Like You got to really think how you want to be sort of portrayed out there in the author community. You don't want people to, to really get confused about your work and to click away ultimately. Now, of course, every writer, I think, has passion projects, and I'm no different. But the thing to take away from all of this is get to those passion projects after you have developed a base in your genre. So if you're writing a mystery genre, in the mystery genre, for example, if you're writing a series and in the back of your mind you really have a passion project and you really want to write a romance novel, that's fine. You can do that after you've built a following and then perhaps your fans will follow over. But if you're writing the mystery book, then you release the romance novel, then you're trying to release a horror novel, that is ultimately going to be to your detriment as an author and your sales will likely suffer as a result. 
Now, if you are adamant that you must write that romance novel right now, and you just can't wait to get out, say, five or six books in your genre to build a following, then I would probably recommend that you do a pen name. That way you can kind of have the best of both worlds, so to speak. You'll have a pen name, you'll have a separate website for that pen name, and then you can write in a multitude of genres to your heart's content. But for those of us who want to build a series from the ground up and want to really build a following from the ground up, I implore all of you to just write in one genre, keep the branding consistent, follow some of the things that we spoke about in some of the other videos on this, how to write a series um, that I've been speaking about here on this channel, and really build that series up little by little. So, you know, hopefully this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments for other writers out there, leave them down below. Maybe you are in the process of branding your own series or you've already branded it and you have some other tips for other writers out there. Leave some comments down below. I really like hearing from all of you. Now, if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do and hit that bell for notifications so you get the updates on when the latest video on my channel comes out. It is a way for YouTube to also determine if my content is resonating with other writers out there. So I'll see all of you in the next video. And as always, keep scribbling.